Hi, everybody. So I just wanted to answer a couple questions about how to solve uh, maximization and minimization problems with multiple constraints. So this is Lagrange multipliers with multiple constraints. Uh, this comes up a couple times on these lab problems that you're working on now. So problem three, you're going to have both of these have to be equal to z, and then you're going to try to um, minimize or maximize z by the local extrema z. Uh, and then also on equation four, you have actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven constraints to work with. But I'm going to show you that it's basically just uh, typing the equations in to Mathematica, right? Uh, also, even if you're not doing three or four, you still uh, can benefit from this video just by seeing how to solve equations, uh, Lagrange-style equations in Mathematica. Uh, so first, just kind of the, the usual situation is if we want to maximize a function f restricted to g equal to c, then we solve the Lagrange equations to find the critical points and then uh, test those critical points, right? So it's exactly the same story if you have multiple constraints. Uh, so in this case, let's say we want to maximize or minimize f on g equals to some constant c1, h equals to some constant c2, and k equals some constant c3. Um, then the only difference is we have to incorporate all three of these constraints. And the way we do that is by uh, this, this is called a linear combination, but right, basically this is just, this is the new Lagrange equation grad f equals some multiplier times the gradient of g plus some other multiplier times the gradient of h plus a third multiplier times the gradient of k. So however many constraints you have, that's how many multipliers you need. But basically, right, if we had four, we would just add on another lambda four times the gradient of whatever our fourth expression is. Uh, so, right, nothing to... Uh, Basically, this we're just going to solve the equation, find the critical points, and then plug it in to find the absolute max and absolute min. All right, okay, so let's let's go through an example quickly here. Um, so here's the function we're going to maximize: x times y times z times w. And here are the three constraints: x equals two times y, y equals two times z, and x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared equals one. Okay. So, first thing we're going to want to do, well, we're going to solve the system of equations, right? So we're going to use solve. And, uh, all right, open bracket. And then we're going to have a list of equations, so we're going to type curly bracket to start a list. And I'm going to hit return just to keep things organized, but don't really have to do that. Now I just need to list my equations. So I'm not going to start with the easier equations, right? This one's sort of complicated. So I'll start with this equation. So I want g to be equal to some constant. Well, what is my g going to be? Uh, well, that's going to be, say, x minus 2y. Right? And that's going to be equal to the constant 0. And remember, equals is two equal signs. So one constraint is x minus 2y is equal to 0. Again, I'm going to hit return here just to keep things organized. Um, OK, what's, the, what's h equal c2? Well, it's going to be y minus 2z then. And that has to be equal to 0. And then the last constraint is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus w squared equals 1. Right, OK. So now on to the last equation here. This one's a bit more tricky, right? So we want the gradient of f. Well, we, can, we could compute this out. This is a four vector. But let's have Mathematica compute the gradient for us. So the gradient is grad, square open square bracket, and then we want x times y times z times w. That's our function. And then now grad is just going to need us to put in the variables in order that we want. So in this case, the order should be x, y, z, w. Right? Okay, so that's grad f. That's the left side of our equation. So now we have equals. Equals what? Well, it's going to equal, instead of writing lambda sub 1, I'll just write L1. That'll be our first Lagrange multiplier. And now we need the gradient of G. So it's going to be grad. Now, what is G? So G is x minus 2y. So I'll copy and paste that. 
and then again, just the variables for uh, for which which gradient, right? The variables in the right order. Okay, if this were a one variable Lagrange multiplier problem, we'd be done, right? Just uh, lambda times the gradient. But in this case, we need to add on the linear combinations of the other gradients. So we have L2 times grad, what's H? So H is Y minus 2Z. X, Y, Z, W are the variables. And then our third constraint is, so this is going to be our K. X squared plus Y squared plus Z squared plus W squared. And then again, the variables X, Y, Z, W. Okay, so we have all four of our equations typed. The, the actual kind of Lagrange equation and then the three constraints. So now we can just close our list of equations and then close our solve. And what do we get? So this is going to be a little too big to read here because of how I'm zoomed in. So I'm going to make it a little smaller for you. Right? Okay, so it found a bunch of solutions. Right? It found here's one set of solutions, here's another set of solutions, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth. Right? So there's six solutions to the Lagrange equations, six critical points. Okay, so now we would we need to plug all of these in, right? Well, actually, this one I can plug into my head. You get zero, right? X times Y times Z times W. Uh, okay, these other ones, you know, we just need to... We could, type these out, right? So, so that's how to solve, to get the uh, Lagrange equations uh, in Mathematica to get the critical points. Um, I'm also gonna show you how to save a little time by plugging them in automatically. Right? So now we need, to, we need to plug all these solutions in to test them, right? You could do that by hand. We can also use Mathematica to do that. So right, remember, we wanna plug them into F, that's our function F we wanna maximize. And then the notation for substitution is slash dot. And then we're just going to copy and paste all these substitution rules that solve outputted for us and put those after a slash dot. And it's going to substitute all of these six solutions into our F and give us all the outputs. And there they are. So, right, the first one was zero, like I thought. Uh, and then it also computes the next um, five inputs. So we can see here the maximum of f is 1 over 14 times the square root of 7, which occurs twice. And then the minimum is this minus 1 over 14 times the square root of 7, which, you know, it's kind of, there's some geometry going on here. This is a four-dimensional sphere that we're working on. So we kind of expect the answers to be symmetric. Uh, that's one of the constraints is that we're on this four-dimensional sphere. So I think the answer should kind of make some sort of sense, too, which is good. Uh, Okay, so big picture, right? If you want to solve Lagrange multipliers with multiple constraints, the Lagrange equation changes a little bit. You have to include uh, a, a Lagrange multiplier times the gradient of kind of each constraint. Uh, and then we also saw how to actually solve a, a large system like this in Mathematica. So best of luck and email me if you have any questions, as always.